So welcome back to Stu Structures. I need to start putting together some buildings for the uh, car yard area of Grafton. So we're going to work on a yard supply building, so stay tuned. So welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart, your favorite Faro Equestrianologist. Um, you know, it, the yard in Grafton was huge. I mean, all, most of the early buildings and the big buildings I've been doing for this is really for the engine facilities, which, the you know, the yard there for the engine facilities is as big as most yards in uh, a lot of the railroads out there. Uh, but the yards extended up for uh, where they worked on all the cars and that type of thing and did all the classification for cars and weighed them and all that type of thing. But there were several structures up there and these changed a lot over time. In 62 there were some new buildings built and some of these older ones torn down. But I have a couple of pictures of a couple of the buildings as they were earlier on. Uh, these were wood uh, lath type of uh, siding structures and uh, you know so I'm going to go ahead and build those and some of the uh, in, the stuff that was sitting around for materials in that area so we're going to start with the supply shed and get that built uh, there's a lot of windows and doors in this building so you know we're just going to jump right into this it's not a complicated build but there's a lot of little parts so uh, we're going to jump into this and get started yeah, I do have this one map of the eastern part of the yard somewhere I've got some other maps but I found this and it kind of shows a couple of the buildings and the supply areas and that type of thing were there this just changed a ton over time in different buildings and stuff and you know I don't have real good shots of these buildings either I have one coming up here in a minute but you, know, you can see there's some tall windows and a door on one end of the building and you know sometimes you can take shots like this and you can go into Photoshop and blow them up and you can kind of get a better idea of what was on the end of the building you can see the door in this was had a window or a, I think about a six pane window or something in the door uh, this is really the best shot of this building that I have and you can see there was a vent two foot by two foot in one end and I just blew this picture up to get scale for everything and figure out the dimensions and you know most of the windows have been repaired over time some of them had six by six panes in them some four by four but I just decided to go with this four by four double hung window and there's these tall windows I'd order from Tichi to do the windows on that one end which you know they're not going to work out and I'll go into that here in a little bit and then uh, most all the doors are five by five panel doors so I ordered a bunch of these and some of them are double five by five wide doors and uh, yeah I'm just using the same types of doors for all of it now you know I started laying this out I, I blew up that drawing like I said and came up with this drawing of how the uh, long wall would be laid out with all the windows and doors and after laying this out on the wood it just you know it was extremely long so I went back and looked at the drawing and these two uh, areas that I circled here and put an X in it I decided to kind of uh, make the building a little shorter so I'm removing these two sections out of that long wall and when I went back and laid it out without that in it I like the way this looks I think it still gives you the feel of uh, the building the way it was even without those sections so I'm going to shorten it down and do this to it so I go ahead and uh, draw all the openings that I need to cut remembering that you know the wood overlaps the uh, face of this so I need to cut the openings to the size of the insets of the doors and after cutting all those out I go back and go ahead and put a basic layer of paint on the wall and get it ready for the doors and windows and then you know the windows they don't have this top seal on the original building and the bottom seal did not protrude out past the wood so I'm just cutting all the windows to come closer to matching what was there and then I take all the doors and windows and just glue them down to board and take them outside and use a rattle can and just paint all of them 
you know and that, that's basically what we look like at that point so now I need to start looking at laying out the end walls as well and you know we have this end here that has the three windows and a vent and top so I figure out the scale for all that so I can go ahead and cut out the wood and the basics just like I did on that long wall and then to make the vent what I'm going to do is just use some of this real thin scrap plastic I had out of my box and I measure it to the two feet that I need it to be and then measure where all the vents would be and I come back and cut angles in that piece and do two of these to uh, make the angles for where the vents would be and then I cut out all four sides the top and bottom would not have the vents in it and the slats on either side would have all these angle cuts and that way I can go ahead and frame it out and I'm just going to use these tuba feast uh, tuba three inch styrene strips to cut for all the slats that actually go into the vent so now after I come back and mount the windows in that wall and go ahead and put this uh, you know glue all this vent in place and I can come back and paint it and trim the face of it as well and then uh, once I have that done you know it's it's another wall ready to go and all these walls I'm pre trimming 45 degree angles on the outside edges of them where they all meet in the corners as well and we need to look at this other end of the building. You can see these real two tall windows and uh, there's a door there that actually has a glass pane in it. I had ordered these uh, windows from Tichy's like I mentioned earlier I think but uh, and they're just too big and bulky for the side of this building so I just decided to come back and make some out of these four by four windows as well. So I need one window to cut up and then two solid ones to make these taller windows out of. And I just come back and basically cut one window into these pieces so I can glue them all together and make the taller windows that will go in that end of the building. Now the door also, I have this door with a window in it, but the door doesn't have a transom in it, but it has panes in the door. So I'm going to use these and just cut these pieces here to glue back together to make the door, which is a closer, uh, you know, looks better like the door that was in there than what I have to work with. And once I glue all that together here, then I can just take it out and Randall can paint it black and the windows as well and uh, you know go ahead and lay out the wall and cut it like I did the other walls and then glue all those parts in and we have another end wall ready to rock and roll and put this building together with and the only thing remaining at that point is the back wall of the building and I really have no picture references or any idea what doors or anything that was in the back of that building so I just took doors and windows that I had and kind of laid these out in this fashion here and cut them out and uh, pre-painted the doors and windows and started gluing all of them into place. Now I'm missing one door frame so I'm going to have to come back and deal with that. Um, but we're ready at this point to start putting the walls together. So I went through my box and found all these pieces of... Uh, basswood here which are just square stock and I come back and on the end walls I mount them flush to the outsides of the walls remembering that that 45 degree angle needs to stick out past because the other walls are going to come past that board and glue into it and then once that's done I just you know I start gluing corners and walls together and uh, the corners get seams on them so you know it doesn't matter if they match perfectly or not and I'm going to use this 1x6 board to do all the trim on the building that needs to be done. So, you know, basically I just come back and start putting this on the corners of the building. And I also use that same 1x6 to frame out this other door that did not have a door frame and uh, kind of buffer it out to the point that I can mount that door in there. Now for windows on these, I'm just using like I do for a lot of buildings, just some styrene out of some packaging that I had that I cut. I'm not worried about them fitting down tight into the windows. I'm just letting them bypass. I'm not going to have interiors or anything like that in this building. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just oversizing them and gluing them into place. 
And then once I cut a piece of uh, balsa wood for the floor and put a little paint on it, I just come back and mount that with these four befores down in the bottom to give me a little extra gluing edge um, to that base. Now for the top, you know, the wall wants to, it's, it's such a long wall, it just does not want to stay straight very good. And I need some bracing for the roof anyway. So I come back and start mounting some extra bracing on the sides of the wall to keep them straight. And then I found this extra few pieces of uh, square stock here as well. And I'm just going to put some braces between the two sides here to hold those into place. So that I know everything is nice and square and the building isn't going to go anywhere and it actually makes it a little easier to handle the building without moving things around and breaking things and then after that's in place I, from each of those I put a little uh, piece of wood upright that holds this center stanchion in the roof and put a few uh, braces down from that and I found this piece of uh, cold board uh, that it's just illustration board for artists, but I'm going to use this for the roof on this. Um, you know, so I just measure it out and come back and cut the panels. And I, you know, I didn't get these exact. I, 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 I just messed them up a little bit, but I decided to go ahead and use them. So I go ahead and glue one side of that on there, and I just use some black construction paper to make a view block to go inside of that building and cut a slot in the middle of them so that I can just kind of slice them together and then I just put them down in the building and then it just you know it makes it look like there's stuff in the building you can't see through from one window to the other and uh, just gives it a better look and then after I glue the second roof side on the building you know the basic roof structure is all in place and the ends, I said, you know, I, I just, I didn't quite get these right. So I, t I just took some 2 by 6 material and started adding it to the ends of these, which I would have had to use a 1 by 6 to frame out the end anyway. But I just had to buffer these out just a little bit more with the 2 by 6 material to make them come out and be, you know, where I need them to be and correct the mistake for my original cutting on the uh, cardboard roof. And for the roof of this, it just has tar paper, so I'm just using this tissue paper that I use for most of my roofs when I do tissue paper or tar roofs. I just think it simulates the wrinkled tar paper better than a lot of materials. And I just glue those strips down after putting some guide, drawing some guidelines on the cardboard, and then put black paint on it. And, you know, that's the basic roof in place. Now, this building did not have gutters but it had some uh, rain deflectors that went above all the doors. So I just found some real small styrene stock and cut all these and then glued them in places over the doors to keep the rain from coming down on whoever's going in and out of the building. That's what was on the original building. And uh, it had several little smoke jacks coming up out of it. So I take this round uh, styrene dowel here and cut, you know, a couple of them are long and several of them are short. And I drill holes in the roof the same size and just glue these into place. And I come back and put a little extra Gorilla Glue around the base of them to kind of look like flashing and uh, stuff on the, you know, that would have been around them to seal the, the rain from getting down in and put black paint on all that. You know, I do come back and just touch up some paints, get rid of some uh, shiny areas on the building with some uh, flat uh, acrylic and uh, just touch some things up. But basically, that's the whole structure in place and ready to place on the layout and put scenery material around it. And, uh, you know, it's a good representation of the original building that would have been there at the time. So there you have a yard supply shop. Uh, you know, there, there was another building in the yard and a supply area that was outside that we're going to model. Uh, but this was a nice, easy wooden structure to build. I mean, it has a lot of doors and windows and, you know, a lot of uh, hoops to go through as far as that was concerned. Uh, but the wooden construction and the paper tar roof and, uh, you know, all that is, is fairly easy to build. And a lot of railroads use this type of a, a structure on their layout, not necessarily this exact make, but things that use the same building uh, uh, structural type of uh, stuff. 
Uh, so hopefully you can jump out there with this information and build something for your model railroad. Um, it's a nice building. It's the beginning of the East Yard for Grafton for me and getting some things together out there. Uh, you know, it, it's just a good build. So thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. Share this information with people out there in the hobby. There are a lot of people who would like to know how to build these kinds of buildings and don't know how. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up down below. It all helps my analytics and helps me get out there so more people find this stuff on the internet and I do appreciate it. Hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I have my new material coming out. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of odd things out there besides for my building builds and uh, you'll get messages when all those come out so you can decide whether you want to watch those or not too. Um, in any case, grab some materials, jump out there and scratch, build some buildings for your model railroad and enjoy the hobby and happy model railroading.